Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Unfog with Dr. Atahar Parvin. In this session, I am going to discuss the most expected questions from Science Pedagogy part for Karnataka TET. So, I am planning three parts for these most expected MCQs. So, I will be giving you the answers uh, to the questions also. So, please do watch this session completely till the end. So, first question is, which teaching approach encourages students to actively construct their own understanding of scientific concepts? See, now this part of pedagogy that is science pedagogy, if you are not preparing also, you can answer the question if and only if you are understanding the given question and trying to apply the given options for that particular question. Okay, you need to match the options with that question and you can easily find the suitable option for that question if you understand the question. Okay, so reread the question once again to understand the correct answer. Okay, so which teaching approach encourages students to actively construct their own understanding of scientific concepts? So what should be the answer here from the four options? What are the four options? Traditional lecture based teaching, rote memorization, inquiry based learning and teacher centered approach. So the correct option for this question is inquiry based learning because this is the one approach wherein students get involved actively in order to explore and investigate the concepts. And this involvement leads to deeper understanding of the concepts in the minds of the students. Okay. So, option C, inquiry based learning will be the correct answer for this question. Next question. What is the primary goal of teaching science through hands-on experiments? So, this is a very simple, easily understandable question, right? What is the primary goal of teaching science through hands-on experiments? Options are entertainment, memorization, conceptual understanding and time saving. So, which should be the primary goal of teaching science through some hands-on experiments? It should be conceptual understanding. Because hands-on experiments are providing practical experience to the learner that aids in understanding the difficult or complex concepts. So, conceptual understanding. Option C will be the Correct answer for this question. Next question. A teacher encourages students to collaborate on a group project related to a scientific topic. What skill is the teacher trying to develop? So, what is the teacher doing? Teacher is encouraging students to mingle with each other. That is to collaborate in one particular project which is related to scientific topic. So, what is the aim of the teacher here? What is the uh, teacher trying to develop? What is the skill which the teacher is trying to develop here? The options given, given are memorization, problem solving, road learning and lizarding. So, what should be the correct answer here? It should be problem solving. The teacher is trying to develop the problem solving skill in the learners. Okay, because usually collaborative projects, they are promoting the problem solving skills because students are working together to find the solution of that particular problem. Okay, so option B, problem solving will be the correct answer. Next question, what type of assessment helps teachers identify students learning gaps during the instructional process? So, what type of assessment is helping teachers? in order to identify students uh, learning gaps while taking the class. So, the options given here are summative assessment, final exam, formative assessment and uh, option D is self assessment. Which one will be the correct answer here? It will be formative assessment. Formative assessment or FA, these are conducted during the instruction while the instructions are given or while the class is taken in order to provide feedback and uh, guide the teaching in the right direction. Okay. Option C, formative assessment will be the correct option for this question. Next question. Which teaching method involves asking open-ended questions and encouraging student discussions? So, the four options are lecture-based teaching, 
रोट मेमोराइजेशन एक्सपोजिटरी टीचिंग एंड क्वेश्चनिंग अप्रोच सो अमॉन्ग दीज फोर ऑप्शन वन ऑप्शन इज द वन विच इज गिविंग यू दि प्रॉपर ओपन एडेड क्वेश्चन एंड एनकरेजिंग दि स्टूडेंट डिस्कशन इन दिट्स अप्रोच सो दि करेक्ट आंसर विल बी क्वेश्चनिंग अप्रोच बिकॉज आस्किंग ओपन एंडेड क्वेश्चन usually encourages critical thinking and discussion among students so questioning approach is one proper teaching method which involves asking open ended questions and encouraging the student discussions next question what is the significance of using real life examples in science teaching so why is uh, using real life examples very important in, while teaching science options are to make the subject difficult to simplify complex concepts to discourage student engagement to increase memorization this one is a very general question right so the correct answer should be of course it should be to simplify complex concepts because real life examples usually help students to relate the abstract concepts in everyday life experiences that's why using real life examples in science teaching simplifies the complex concepts in the minds of the learners okay next question what type of assessment is typically used to evaluate the overall understanding of a scientific concept at the end of instruction so is it formative assessment is it summative assessment is it self assessment or is it peer assessment see two main important assessments are formative assessment and summative assessment okay formative assessment was uh, giving the uh, right direction for the teaching right by giving the feedback here the correct answer is the summative assessment because this assessment evaluates the outcomes of the learner i mean to say the it evaluates the learning outcomes at the end of a period of the instruction usually formative assessments are like unit tests right they are conducted uh, monthly or something like that in a very short term period whereas summative assessments are like uh, midterm examinations or final examination you can say usually these assessments are conducted at the end of a period of a instruction that is end of the term they are conducted okay next question a teacher uses multimedia presentations diagrams and videos to explain scientific concepts what strategy is the teacher employing the options are lecture based teaching inquiry based learning visual aids textbook approach of course the options only are giving the indication for the right answer multimedia usage where in presentations diagrams or videos are shown are nothing but visual aids so these visual aids usually improve the understanding of the learner by providing visual representation of a very difficult or complex concepts okay so option c visual aids is the correct answer for this question next question what is the primary goal of scaffolding in science education the options are removing all challenges for students providing ready made solutions supporting students as they develop skills discouraging the independent thinking so what is the correct option for this question scaffolding actually scaffolding assists students in achieving task which they cannot do independently so the primary goal of scaffolding in science education is to support the students because uh, they need some time to develop skills correct so this scaffolding helps them in developing these skills okay so option c supporting students as they develop skills is the correct answer okay next a teacher encourages students to ask why and how questions to stimulate curiosity what strategy is being employed here so the options are encouraging memorization promoting rote learning fostering inquiry based learning using scripted teaching so why and how comes under promoting the critical thinking and inquiry by asking the questions okay so asking why and how questions usually it promotes critical thinking and inquiry so this comes under fostering inquiry based learning so when a student asks a teacher 
why and how so teacher usually encourages the students because this helps in fostering the inquiry based learning among the students okay now it's time to discuss the most important questions of this session there are two most important questions the first question is name the best teaching aid that can be used to teach the life history of fern plant effectively four options are given bulletin board flannel board or flannel graphs vivarium printed chart so which among these four options is the best teaching aid which can be used to teach the life cycle of a fern plant so that the learners understand the life cycle of a fern plant very easily so the answer to this question is a flannel board actually flannel board uh, consists of cut out images which can effectively teach the life cycle of a fern plant because this is a visual tool that's why it engages students and helps them understand the different stages of the life cycle of this fern plant okay now coming to what is this flannel board you can just uh, uh, imagine one notice board outside a class or uh, in the premises of the school where in teachers uh, uh, stick some pictures or uh, cut out images in order to make students understand what they actually want to explain okay uh, for example if you are talking about the fern plant we have this we can take a print out of uh, this type of a life cycle of the fern plant or we can take the actual specimen the fern plant leaves and we can uh, make some project in order to stick it on that flannel board and uh, you can also take the help of students in making this uh, uh, flannel board okay so what does this uh, life cycle of the fern plant consist uh, actually uh, in special parts called sporangia the fern makes some tiny spores now these spores are kept in this sporangia then with water the tiny sperm cells move around and sperm cells meet with egg cells uh, then there is some mixing together and this mixed cells grow into a new plant so this is what is uh, depicted in this uh, picture also wherein you can see how meiosis happens in the matured sporophyte then the spores are released and then sperm cells are getting interacted thereby you get one matured gametophyte and fertilization happens and then zygote is formed and then new sporophyte is formed okay see to answer this type of a question you don't need to know the life cycle of the fern plant you just should have an idea that uh, how can a student understand the life cycle of a fern plant or for that matter life cycle of a mosquito or life cycle of a butterfly or anything of that sort okay clear right next important question of this session heuristic method is a method of teaching which involves in placing our students as far as possible in the attitude of a discoverer this statement is given by so who is the person who gave this statement about heuristic method he is armstrong westway rayburn or coombs so okay friends these were the 10 questions based on uh, this session so meet you soon with the second session wherein i am going to discuss 10 more questions based on science pedagogy okay then so if you have not subscribed to my channel please do subscribe and if you have not joined my telegram channel please do join telegram channel with the link given in the description below this video we are discussing lot of questions and concepts in the channel so it will be very helpful for you to stay connected at least till your examination okay then thank you all the best bye